Alright, so today we're looking at 11.3. We want to talk about <clears throat> combinations. Uh, combinations are a little bit different than permutations. So that leads us to our very first objective. We want to actually distinguish between a permutation, which uh, rank and order matters, and a combination where rank and order do not matter. Um, and there are a couple of specific cases of that and a word that we'll look for. And then what we want to do is solve problems involving combinations using the combination formula. So the first thing is, how are we going to distinguish between a permutation and a combination? Like, like what's the difference? Okay. So here, I, I did these a little bit different from what Blitzer did. So this is the next one that we have. All right. So let's look. If you're given A, B, C, and D, right? We can actually compare how many permutations and how many combinations are possible if we choose three letters at a time. And if you look, if you choose the first three letters, A, B, and C, all right, then you could order those as A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, right, B, C, A, C, A, B, and B, uh, C, B, A, right? And if this first row right here means something like president or first place or highest or something like that and the second row means something else then this makes sense all right <coughs> excuse me but what if your mom just says pick three toys and throw it in your overnight bag um, because you're going over to grandma's house. Well, then it really doesn't matter whether you have, um, you know, a car, a G.I. Joe, and a teddy bear, or a car, a teddy bear, and a G.I. Joe, because really, these all contain a car, a teddy bear, and a G.I. Joe, right, all in the bag. So the combination doesn't really matter of the three toys. So a permutation rank matters, and you get a bunch of these, Whereas a combination rank doesn't matter, and all of these reduce down to this simple case right here. I have three things. Well, what if you chose the first, um, the second, and the last letter, right? So first, second, last, first, last, second, and you get all of these permutations, right? Where the first column means something, the second column means something, and the third column means something. A rank ordering is what it means. But again, if we go back to the overnight thing, and you're just going to grandma's house, now you've got your car, your um, teddy bear, and instead of your G.I. Joe, you're going to take uh, your flashlight, you know? And so now you've got the car, the G.I. Joe, and the flashlight all in the bag to go to grandma's house, okay? And so you can see there are way more permutations than there are combinations when order doesn't matter. Okay, so let's formalize that. Okay, so in a combination of items occurs when the items are selected from the same group, no item is used more than once, and the order of the items makes no difference. And this is the huge difference, okay, between a combination and a permutation. Combination, the order of the items makes no difference. For a permutation, it makes all the difference in the world. A permutation involves situations where orders matter and combinations do not. All right. So how do we take care of this in a formula form? How do I get from a permutation with all of these possibilities down to a combination that only has these four possibilities? Well, it seems like I need to be able to divide this bigger group where the order does matter into this smaller group well, the order doesn't matter. And it turns out that that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to divide basically our permutation formula, the n factorial over n minus r factorial. We're going to divide it by the number of items that we have to get rid of that rank ordering factor. And so you have an additional r factorial in here that makes it smaller. <clears throat> This is often read as N choose R, okay? So this is often read as N choose R. Uh, and just a little plug, because it's one of my favorite websites, if you go to Wolfram Alpha, 
uh, dot com, you can actually put in, you know, uh, five items, choose three, and you will get um, the the combinations formula to come out and tell you how many of each thing that you have. And so I actually checked, double checked all my slides with Wolfram Alpha. Okay, you can. We're going to show you how to use this function and the permutation function in your calculator in class. Okay, so let me make a note of that. Um, there is a function on the TI-84, uh, um, and we'll go over that in class. Alright, so don't forget to bring your 84 to class. Okay. Now, let's do some problems, right? We love doing the problems. This is what really gets us through, okay, to some understanding. So here's example number one. We're going to determine whether we have a permutation or a combination, and then we're going to solve it. Six students are running for student government president, vice president, and treasurer. They mention three specific offices. So if they mention three specific offices, this is going to be a permutation, okay? And I'm going to have six permutations of three, right? Six, choosing three of them. And when I do that, I'm going to have my six factorial over six minus three factorial. And again, there's a function on your calculator that will do this. And that's going to be equal to uh, six factorial over the three factorial. And when you simplify that out, you get 120. Check to make sure that you get that in your calculator. But there it is. I tend to find that typing in the 6 factorial over the 3 factorial is actually faster than going to this function in the calculator. Um, so that's why I didn't mention it in the last video. Uh, but I do find it a whole lot faster for the uh, combinations function. Okay, So let's go ahead on to the next one. Alright. So, uh, in this example, we have six people are on a board of supervisors for your neighborhood park. A three-person committee is needed to study the possibility of expanding the park. This idea of committee and the fact that there is no chairperson, secretary, treasurer, none of that, which just says committee, this is a dead giveaway that you have a combination. Okay, it's a dead giveaway you have a combination. And so out of the six people, you're going to pick three. So you have six, choose three. Okay, and so here you're going to have the um, six factorial over the six minus three factorial times the three factorial, right? The number of people that you're choosing. The three shows up in both places. So you're going to reduce that out. Um, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The 6 minus 3 is 3, so you're going to have the 3 factorial, and then the 3 factorial again. Okay. Now you'll notice the, the 1 doesn't really matter, but the 2's are going to reduce to a 1, the 3's are going to reduce to a 1. 3 times 2 is 6, so the 6 is going to reduce both of those to a 1. So you'll notice you have all 1's and 5 times 4 is 20. All all over 1's on the bottom and so the final answer here is 20. It's a huge difference. Okay, When order matters you have 120 possibilities and then when order doesn't matter you only have 20 possibilities. So it's a huge difference. Alright. So now again here's that committee word in our example. How many three-person committees could be formed from eight people? So I'm going to have eight choose three because this is definitely a combination because of the word committee. Okay, so it's definitely true here. Um, so I'm going to have eight factorial all over my um, eight minus three factorial times the 3 factorial, right? So the 8's repeated and the 3 is repeated. Um, I'm probably going to do this in my calculator. I did check my answer in, in Wolfram Alpha, but if you had to do it out by hand, it would be seven, uh, 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 all over. I am going to uh, fudge here. 8 minus 3 is 5, so I'm going to put the 5 factorial over here, 
okay? Which I hope you can see why. And then the 3 factorial I'm going to put over here, all right? Which will be readily apparent in a minute. So the 2's will reduce, the 3's will reduce, the 4's will reduce, the 5's will reduce, and again the 6 will reduce the 3 and the 2 down to a 1. And now all you're left with is 1's on the top and uh, 7 times 8, uh, which is 56, and all 1's on the bottom, so this is your final answer. So if you have 8 people, you can pick 56 committees of 3 persons from it. Um, where the order doesn't matter. And again, we know the order doesn't matter because it says committees. There's no special officers or anything. Alright? Last but certainly not least, it's probably my favorite. Uh, I love math and politics when they merge together. And so, um, in December of 2009, the United States Senate consisted of 60 Democrats and 40 Republicans, um, which is absolutely true. Okay? So, how many committees... Uh, can be formed if each committee must have three Democrats and two Republicans. And this is actually how they do it, right? So the Senate has um, the ruling party has one extra member on the committee to uh, have the deciding vote, right? So the chairperson of this committee is going to be a Democrat, and there are going to be two Republicans on it for, you know, some sort of bipartisanship. Um, but to get something done, uh, the majority party is going to have an extra tie-breaking vote. So this is exactly how it works. All right. So now if there are 60 Democrats, um, the Democratic leadership has 60 uh, to choose, right, three from, okay? And so this is going to give us our number of Democrats, and so we're going to have 60 factorial all over. Uh, 60 minus 3 is 57 factorial times 3 factorial. Now, the reason I did that is because you're going to have 60 uh, times 59 times 58 times the 57 factorial is going to reduce with the 57 factorial down here, and then you're just going to have 3 times 2 times 1. So the 57 factorial will reduce to just a 1, and you'll be left with 60 times 59 times 58 divided by 3 times 2 times 1, which is just 6, right? Now, as long as this is in parentheses and this is in parentheses on the bottom, you will get the correct answer, which is 34,220, okay? So that's the correct number of Democratic committee members, right? Well, the Republicans get to pick two. All right, so there are 40 Republicans from which I am going to choose two. You're going to get a very similar idea. 40 factorial over 40 minus 2 is 38 factorial all over the 2 factorial. And so the idea is the 40 and the 39 are the only things that survive. The 38 factorial reduces out all over 2 times 1 factorial. And again, if you do that one, you end up with 780 possibilities for the uh, Republican leadership to choose two people from. Okay? Well, wait a minute. The committee actually has five people on it. Three Dems and two Republicans. So the idea is I'm going to choose one group of three out of here, and I'm going to choose one group of two out of here. Well, now we're back to the fundamental counting principle, aren't we? If I choose one group out of here, that means I'm going to have 34,220 uh, times the 780 as I choose one group out of here. And when I multiply those together, I get the astounding 26,691,600 possibilities. All right? That's a lot of possibilities for the leadership. Uh, they don't do it at random. They, they pick people uh, based on their expertise and experience and what they signed up for and stuff. And so this concludes our ability to use combinations and permutations and understand the difference. Um, and it also allows us to understand when we're going to use the fundamental counting principle um, in some of these problems. All right. So that makes us happy. And now you can go on to uh, the next section.